This year in 2024, Google has continued to roll out the changes to its Google Ads platform faster than what a 23-year-old Usain Bolt could run the 100-meter sprint. But the good news is, is that despite all of these changes, which have already occurred and will be coming over the coming weeks, months, and years, the main thing to remember is that the core pathway to success with your Google Ads campaigns is having the correct optimization strategy. That's why in this video, I'm really, really excited to be sharing with you my updated Google Ads optimization checklist. Now, this is the very first time that I've released a checklist which has the core six campaigns that you need to be using in one checklist. So this checklist will let you know all the different actions that you need to complete for your search campaigns, your shopping campaigns, performance max, display, video, and also demand gen. And like all of my optimization checklists, it not only breaks down the actions that you need to complete, but it also lets you know the correct speed that you should be completing these actions. So whether you're completing them every week, every month, or every 90 days, because it is really, really important to note that you can easily over-optimize your Google Ads campaigns. So if if you want to make sure that you're completing all the correct optimizations at the right time, just follow the link in the description below and you can get access to my brand new updated Google Ads optimization checklist. So what I'm also going to be doing is over the next two weeks, I'm going to be releasing two step-by-step -step tutorial videos where I'll take you through some of the core optimization actions that you need to be completing in each of your campaigns. So with all that said, let's jump straight into a screen share so I can take you through the new checklist and also some core optimization actions that you need to be completing in your Google Ads campaigns. All right, so when you get into the checklist, you're gonna see the very similar format to what it was previously. So if you've already got my optimization checklist, the navigation is pretty much the same. Just remember that you only have view only access to this. So if you wanna go through and make your own edits, which I really recommend, is to go to file and then make a copy and then you have got your own checklist that you can edit and make notes to as you need to. Some of the changes that you will see is you'll see here along the bottom, we've now got a tab for every individual type of campaign. Campaign. So search, shopping, performance max, display, demand gen, and video. And then as you go through each of these, you'll see that there is actually different lists. And this comes back to depends which campaign that you are optimizing. So because there are some different optimization tasks. All right. So the other thing that I will be releasing, you'll see down here on the left column, you'll see there is something which is called the stab method, which is something I'll be teaching about over the coming weeks, which is a new framework that I've put together for optimizing your campaigns. And it's also part of my updated course, which is going to be released in the coming weeks. So what I'm going to be focusing on today, let's take this first video to really focus in on search and shopping campaigns and really focus on some of the core optimization actions that you need to be completing. We'll just do this in the targeting section, which will be our keyword targeting, our keyword review, and then also we'll do some ad copy checks. So let me just go into Google ads. So the first thing, if you want to be completing a search term audit, now, if you're unfamiliar with the terminology of a search term audit, that's where we actually go through through the search terms that users are using to trigger your ads, and then you're building out extra negative keyword lists. So when you're in a search campaign, you go into insights and reports. Then when you're in insights and reports, go into search terms. And remembering once again, the difference is this is showing you the search terms which actually triggered your ads. And what you wanna be doing from here is any of these search terms which are not relevant, you just basically go through, so let's just say this one, these two are not relevant. We would then go through and add them as a negative keyword. Now, if you are in a shopping campaign, it's slightly different because what we're doing with a shopping campaign, as you may be aware, you you can't add keywords because it's taking you from your product title. So the two things you wanna be doing here is that when you're in your campaign, you wanna be going once again into insights and reports, and then underneath the third one down, you'll see search terms. This is giving you the same data. So it's the same thing, but what we're looking at here is we're doing this in terms of a shopping campaign, and I can see a couple in here which are not relevant. So what we do from there is that we would then add these as a negative keyword. Now, the other thing that what you'd wanna do in here as well is that if you go down and you can feel down by impressions or clicks. Let's just go the last 14 days. And I've got this filtered down by some versions. Now they do have other campaigns which are taking a lot of the load. This is kind of a supporting campaign. What you wanna be doing here is you wanna be checking two things. One, you wanna be checking the search terms and are they relevant to your product titles? So you can sometimes get the case where people are searching for a slightly different term of what your product title is. So what you would do from here is you just go through, look at the search terms, then you go to your core products. Now, when you change your product titles, you do need to go and do this in Merchant Center. But what you're doing from here is you're going through and just checking, is this match? Now, 
This is all about our snoring pillow. So that actually matches with our top converting search term. So we don't need to make any changes, but if you were to see a difference there, you would definitely go through and update your product titles. So that's how we go through and do the search term audit for the search campaign and how you also go through and do it for the shopping campaign. And in the shopping campaign, we also did do that product title review. Now let's go down to some different things about your ads and your landing pages. And we're specifically gonna just check on the ad. So for a shopping campaign, obviously you don't have control over the ad copy. So we wanna more be doing this in the search campaign. And you wanna go through and review your split tests. So the way that we go through and do this is that when we're in your campaigns, you go into the ads section. And what I'm showing you through here is two different search ads that we've got. and what we had done previously in June, we set up a new split test with this one. And what the difference is, is that this one has a pinned in headline into position one, which is a dynamic keyword insertion, whereas this one does not have that. So when you do set up a split test, it's really, really important to make sure that you are only testing one thing at a time, because what we wanna be able to then see is we wanna to start to see this data. So remember, this is the one that has got the pinned in headline. And as you can see through here, the conversion rate is lower, slightly lower between 11% down to 9%. But where we're seeing a really big difference is the conversion metrics and especially around this conversion rate. Now, this is where you do need to make some decisions based on what's more important for you and your business. Now, the reason for why with this one, we're gonna be putting a lot more value on our conversion rate rather than our click-through ratio is because for this campaign, this is really speaking to a specific additional benefit of this product. And that's because it qualifies as an NDIS product here in Australia, which is just a government policy that we don't really need to go into, but it's more than just looking at in this ad group and these two ads, we're really calling out a specific type of buyer who generally buy larger, higher volume purchases. So that's why for us, we are really, really focusing in on this conversion rate because these lead to much higher buyers and much higher volume buyers. So for us, because we know in this campaign, we've also got other performance max and shopping campaigns, this click-through ratio, although Though it is slightly lower than the other ad, we're putting much more value on the conversion rate. So that's why for us, what we would do is that we would then go through, pause this losing ad, and then create a duplication of this winning ad or the winner ad, which we want to call it. And then from there, we would then go through and make another change. So we have worked out in this first test that these ads perform better when they have a dynamic keyword insertion pinned into position one. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another ad where we will add a pinned in headline in position two, which is more focused on a call to action. Now, the other thing I just do, do want to let you know is people do ask this. You can see here in these ad strengths, they're both ranked as poor. For us, that's the beauty of this optimization checklist is because we put much more value on the data that we're seeing, not this relative ad strength. So there are two core actions that you can complete for your search and your shopping campaigns. And as I said, we're going to be doing some extra follow-up videos where I'll also take you through some of these other actions. But while we're here, let's do one more. And this is this auction insights report view. So with this one, you you go into insights and reports and your auction insights. And the reason for why this is valuable is that this lets us know where we're spending in relation to some of our other competitors. And how we can take this data is if we start to see that we are seeing an increase in our CPC, or we're starting to see some of our conversion metrics drop off. One of the explanations of that is the fact that we have some extra competition in the market, or we've got extra ads which are outperforming us. So what we can do from there is it really gives us some extra context to really look at and see why are we losing some visibility? A great way that I go through and do this is I also go through and do it for certain months. So you can go back and do it for July. We can see where we were here. So we can see here we're at 18%. And then if we go back to, let's go back to August, the next month, we can see it stayed in and around about the same. Let's go the last 30 days, but we can see now that it started to drop off. So our impression share has gone down to 15%. So we can really start to look at, there has been some other players which are starting to increase their spend. And then we can make some strategic decisions about what we need to do with our campaign spending. So that's the way that you go through and use this checklist. You go through, complete all the tasks, and then that way you always know whether you're up to date with your optimizations for your Google Ads campaigns. Now, just a little reminder, if you want to get access to that Google Ads optimization checklist, and that's the actual checklist which I use to optimize all of my accounts that start from a spend of only $300 a month, all the way up to some accounts which are spending over $750,000 a month. This is a strategy and an optimization checklist 
service that you can use regardless of the size of the accounts that you are currently managing in Google Ads. So as always, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. If you wanna grab that checklist, follow the link in the description below. But also if you wanna see more about how we go through and optimize our campaigns, I want you to go through and watch this playlist here, which takes you through some different live optimizations that we complete for different clients. And finally, a big thank you for all of your support and make sure if you haven't already to not only subscribe, but turn on that notification bell so you never miss when we release a new video, especially part two of this optimization series. See you guys.